Welcome to the Maths Made Easy tutorial on the graph transformations. So in this video, we'll cover four different transformations, and then in a separate video, uh, we'll cover some example exam style questions. Uh, so let's look at the first one then, which is translation in the X axes. Uh, so a translation in the X axes, uh, we can represent generally uh, for a function F of X, a translation in the X axes will be F of X plus A. So the effect of this plus a on the end is that the whole graph is translated by a in the negative x direction. So if we have plus two on the end, then the whole graph shifts left two. If we have minus three on the end, the whole graph shifts right by three. Uh, so for instance, on the axes shown, we have the graph y equals minus x cubed plus four. Uh, so that's this graph here. Uh, and what if we want to have the graph of y equals minus x minus two cubed plus four? Uh, well, uh, we shift by a in the negative x direction, uh, which means that instead of moving minus two, uh, we move plus two to the right. Uh, so uh, let's just take this point here, uh, which is where the graph turns, uh, and then let's move that two spaces to the right. So that's gonna be here. Uh, and then we can kind of draw the whole graph again. Uh, so it'll look something like this. So that's been shifted two spaces to the right. So moving on, let's have a look at translation in the y-axis now. Uh, so this is where we're moving the graph, or the whole graph, vertically. Uh, so what does this look like? Well, if we have a function f of x, uh, then a translation in the y-axis is expressed as f of x plus a. So this is where we add a value of a to the whole function uh, once the values of x have been passed through, that is. Uh, so for instance, if we have the graph of y equals x minus 3 all squared plus 1, so that's the one on the right here, uh, and we add plus three onto the end. So our uh, a value in this case is this three on the end. Uh, so that simplifies to x minus three all squared plus four. What does that look like in terms of a translation? Uh, well, the whole graph moves uh, by a value of plus four. Uh, so this minimum point here uh, will move four squares upwards. Uh, so the minimum point will now be here. So the whole graph will look something like this. So moving on to the third transformation then, this is reflection in the x axis. Uh, so when you reflect something in a line, so a graph, uh, everything that's on one side of the line is flipped over and put on the other side of the line. Uh, so if that line is the x-axis, then everything on one side of the x-axis is flipped over and put on the other side. So as a function, uh, so if we have the function f of x, then to flip it in the x-axis, uh, we would then have the function of minus f of x. Uh, so for instance, if we have the graph of y equals sine x, uh, then in order to flip that in the x-axis or reflect it in the x-axis, uh, we'd make the graph y equals minus sine x. Uh, so the effect of this is that every positive y value is made negative. Uh, so the graph uh, would look something like this. So as I've said, uh, what we are essentially doing here is we're taking every positive y value, turning it negative, and we're taking every negative y value and we're turning it positive. The effect of which is a reflection in the x-axis. So if we move on to have a look at the final transformation then, which is a reflection in the y-axis, uh, essentially what we're doing here is instead of taking y values, we're taking x values and turning them from positive to negative and vice versa. So we have positive x values, they become negative x values, and we have negative x values, which become positive x values. So more generally, uh, if we have a function f of x and we want to reflect it in the y-axis, uh, then we essentially just take f of minus x. Uh, so for instance, if we have the graph of y equals 2x plus 4, uh, and we want to reflect this graph in the y-axis, uh, then we make every x value that was positive negative. Uh, this comes out as y equals minus 2x plus 4. So if we plot that graph, uh, the y-intercept sorry, the y -intercept is still going to be 4. Uh, the gradient this time is minus 2, uh, so it should look like this. So as you can see, this has been reflected in the y-axis. Now understanding graph transformations is an important skill, so if you'd like to get some more practice in preparation for your exam, then you can have a go at our online exam, uh, and you'll find loads of different questions, uh, all of which you'll get instant feedback on, so you can keep track of the areas that you need to improve at. So if you're interested, you can have a go at the exam now and click the link below.